Okay, wonderful. Let's get started. Um, welcome, welcome to my first university class. My name is Diodate and I'll be guiding you through the class. We'll do a bit of theoretical stuff at the beginning. Um, just the normal presentation and I'll talk to you. Um, you can obviously always ask questions uh, as normal in the in-game chat channel but the problem is i only have one monitor so i can't always tap back and forth so i will probably not just answer them right away uh, if you have something that you really need to get out just speak up and mumble that's also totally fine um, but yeah otherwise you can just write your questions while we go and then uh, answer them at the end uh, on Discord, you'll be able to follow the presentation, and you can also go to my uh, Twitch channel to yeah, also see the stream and see the practical stuff, uh, demonstration and practice later, if you like. Yeah, okay, uh, let's get started. Um, we are talking about Exploration is this an introductory class, so this is really for beginners, but obviously you might pick up like a thing or two uh, as well uh, if you have some experience. We talk about uh, scanning and hacking, um, so this is very much focused on one aspect of one central aspect of exploration uh, or just a few, so it doesn't encompass everything. Uh, we have a few standard class rules. Um, you should set your microphone to push and talk and mumble. Um, obviously, as I said, you can ask your questions in uh, class uh, uni in-game channel, but you can also speak up and mumble if you have something right away. And um, you can also write in my Twitch chat if you're watched there. Yeah, preface your questions obviously with Q and yeah, you should stay docked up, but obviously if you want to go ahead and, I don't know, do some dank solo PvP or free PvP or whatever and really be stressed out and not actually follow the <laughs> class, you might as well do that. <laughs> uh, that's up to you, but yeah, obviously if you want to stay safe and really be focused on the class, just stay docked up for now. Yeah, if you want to uh, attend the practical yeah, little training session uh, after the class, uh, you should be in Aminyong, also at HSC, and yeah, in an exploration ship, ideally with an expanded probe launcher and comet probes, so you can try your hand at that. And yeah, you need a data analyzer for the hacking part. Okay, before we start, any questions you have uh, or the procedures or anything, just speak up. Um, I see a class uh, in-game channel. Yeah, regular explorer heron is fine. You just need an expanded probe launcher and combat probes um, to actually instead of the normal uh, to actually probe do the practice because I planted a few ships in Aminon. Okay, uh, let's go to, through the overview. We just talk about uh, at first what is actually exploration, uh, what type of uh, exploration is there, what you what can you find through exploration? Uh, what different types of explorers? For uh, what we are focusing on, we are focusing on one specific type of exploration. Uh, we will go through what you actually need uh, in terms of ships, modules, and uh, skills. So in terms of in-game skills, um, but also the player skills. Obviously, that's what we are focusing uh, on at the end so we actually go through 
how you do the actual site scanning, how you do the actual hacking. Um, yeah, the rule of six is already mentioned here. Maybe you heard of that before. We'll go through that and then a few more tips and tricks. So I can maybe uh, talk about some experience I had. Um, if you had some experience, you can obviously share that as well. And then after all the theor theoretical stuff, I'll do a little, um, yeah, practical, uh, show you a bit, uh, do, you do a little bit of practice. So I'll show you uh, how the real things all work uh, in game. So you can follow that on my stream if you like. Uh, I will go through it as well, uh, talk through it again. And afterwards, if you want, you can be an Eminon and uh, do some hacking and scanning training. So what is exploration? Uh, exploration is, yeah, you fly through space, you find stuff, obviously you explore uh, and you can find different things in EVE. Uh, we are talking specifically about uh, cosmic signatures. Uh, that's the focus for us. But we also have cosmic anomalies. Um, so if you have your uh, probe window uh, open, you can always see in every system you go through uh, all the cosmic anomalies and cosmic signatures. Cosmic anomalies will be green and you can just click on the warp to button and cosmic signatures will be red and you actually need to scan them down before you can warp to them. Yeah, what's in the cosmic anomalies? Those are mainly comet anomalies uh, or anomalies and faction warfare. That's for specific, uh, the faction warfare is obviously for the specific uh, type of space. So if you are in low sec in a faction warfare space, you can also find those faction warfare sites there. But in all other spaces, you have the comet am anomalies, uh, you have the or anomalies that can be used obviously to do PVE. Uh, of the different types, but that's not the focus of our class. We are primarily interested in the cosmic signatures. There are many different types of cosmic signatures. There are also comet sites and gas sites uh, that you can scan down again for PVE or for mining, um, which is also not really the focus for us. There are also very special sites like ghost sites, there are also sleeper caches um, and various other things that are very specific. Um, ghost sites uh, might go into more after the class, but yeah, usually you need a very specific approach for those special sites. Our focus is on the uh, relic and data sites right here at the bottom. Um, that's the typical exploration. When we talk about exploration, that's typically what we talk about. Obviously, the wormholes are also really interesting for us uh, as explorers because that's where uh, yeah, the best relics and data sites can be found. Apart from Nausek, Sofnol as well. Hmm. Looks like my system is hanging up again. There we go. Uh, yeah, my system sometimes hangs up, so sorry for that. Okay, um, different types of explorers. Obviously, we have explorers that focus on cosmic anomalies, where there's cosmic signatures. Uh, if you're an explorer that focuses on cosmic anomalies, you do not need uh, specific e equipment to scan them down. So that's uh, something that makes it a little bit easier, maybe. Um, but of course, for, for us, the cosmic signatures are what we are uh, interested in. 
We can do obviously combat exploration with those uh, normal cosmic anomalies that are not that you don't need to be uh, don't need to scan down, but you can also do combat exploration with uh, cosmic signatures. Um, but yeah, again, that's not really our focus here. What we are focusing on is the hacking explorer. That's the typical explorer when we talk about explorer in Eve. Yeah, what do you need? Um, obviously, uh, as with pretty much anything else, all the different factions or the main factions have ships available to get started in uh, that specific activity. So exploration, we have exploration focused ships uh, for every major faction. For Ma, that's the Magnate. For Galanta, that's the Imicus. For the Heron, that's uh, for Kaldari, that's the Heron, and for Minmatar, that's the Probe. Obviously, as I'm Minmatar and all about the Rust, that's my choice, or was my choice right at the beginning. Yeah, those ships all have bonuses, obviously. Um, they are specifically made for exploration. So, right here, you can see uh, right at the Bottom right, you can see an example of how that looks uh, here for the uh, Kaldari version, so the Heron. But uh, it's always, if you have a racial frigate, um, you have always a racial frigate bonus. So Minmata frigate, Kaldari frigate, Galanta or Amar frigate. And for each skill level in that um, skill, you get a bonus to uh, yeah, probe strength. We talk about that later. Uh, and also salvager, which is not really that uh, important for us. And there's also roll bonus, um, which gives plus five to relic and data analyzer. Virus strength, we also talk about that later when we go into the hacking part. So yeah, uh, recommendation is to have uh, obviously frigate uh, skill level, racial frigate skill level to four. It's just two days of training thereabouts. Um, so that's really, really helpful to have like a good baseline to start uh, uh, right into exploration. But you can obviously just train into them and just go ahead. If you do it in high sec, it's really not a big deal. You can just do it in high sec and get to know uh, things, just get a feeling for it. Yeah, obviously, um, once we, you go up to uh, racial frigate skill level five, um, as with um, pretty much all the other ship skills, you also unlock the T2 versions, or that's a prerequisite to get further into the uh, trees and through the ship trees uh, and get into the T2 versions. You can find here for those, you will need uh, covert ops as well as a, a further skill. And then you can go uh, and get yourself a shiny T2 version of the aforementioned ships. So for the Amara, that's the Anathema. For the Galenta, that's the Helios. The Kaldari, the Buzzard. And the Minmata, the Cheetah. So again, obviously, that's the best one. Uh, that's the one I've flown lots of times and lost lots of times. <laughs> and then there's also, um, yeah, other ships, um, most notably the Astero, that's basically the uh, yeah, uh, very iconic exploration ship also, because it's not specific to any of the major fictions. Um, what's nice about the Astero, uh, I'll show it later to you, it's uh, something I recently actually got, because before I only used the Cheetah pretty much, um, but the Astero is nice because you can get into it relatively easily skill-wise. Um, it has decent bonuses. It doesn't has, have uh, as good bonuses if you have like max skills for the uh, T2 um, Covert Ops uh, ships, but it has really good bonuses. And what's also nice about this, uh, it's not completely yeah, defenseless. All the covert ops ships uh, of the Empire factions are 
basically defenseless. If you get caught, it doesn't matter if you're in the T1 or T2 versions, you're basically dead. With the Astero, yeah, you might have a chance in some in some way at least. Um, you can get decent tank and can actually kind of fight back or at least escape in either way. Um, of course, all the T2 versions are quite a bit more expensive than the T1 versions. Actually, like the T1 exploration frigates, you will see uh, example fits in just a little bit are dirt cheap. Like it's exploration is super cheap to get into uh, to just get started, and you can make like ridiculous amounts of isk like right from uh, day one basically that's the nice thing about exploration that's what I really enjoyed about from from the beginning and then you can go further you can invest the isk you made and uh, yeah go into the uh, oops nope sorry uh, go into the t2 versions or you go to for the Astero, you could use the Stradius later on, or T3 Cruisers if you're really going for it. And there's also um, yeah, a specific niche uh, I will show later in the stream. That's the um, yeah, Exploration Interceptor. Obviously Interceptors, uh, T2 uh, yeah, Tiger Ships, those are not actually made for Exploration, but you can use them uh, in a specific way. They're quite fun, but yeah, it's a, it's a niche. What do you really need uh, if you fit your exploration ship? Doesn't really matter if it's T1, T2, uh, Stradius, whatever. Uh, obviously, you definitely need the launcher and the probes to actually scan down the uh, the sites, and you need uh, yeah the analyzers uh, to actually do the hacking. There are also specific analyzers um, that do both things. Um, those cost a lot more, but uh, the basic data analyzer and basic relic analyzer are for either the data sites or the relic sites. So we have two different types of sites with different loot. Um, actually, like the focus is really on the data site. If you only take one, it's usually common that you take the, the data analyzer and just do data sites. I've always done both, um, but yeah, lots of people just focus on data sites. And then we have so-called optional modules, so you do not need uh, yeah, them to actually do the activity, but obviously to complete your fit and to actually have a affect a ship you really need them um, it's really good to have um, yeah, propulsion module obviously usually you take an mwd micro warp drive 5mn uh, the smallest one for the frigates uh, to really get fast from uh, the different cans uh, in the sites uh, that's really good to have for well, that also the nanofiber is really nice uh, because it makes your ship uh, faster the little bit less tank you get for it it doesn't really matter because as I said at least in a normal um, exploration ship you're basically toast anyway if you get caught inertia st stabilizers are also a decent option if you're worried about like gate camps or anything uh, you can get your align time down and some more uh, convenient modules uh, quite interesting for specific circumstances as well so if you have lower skills you can use the scan range finding array uh, to boost your uh, uh, yeah boost your scanning ability a bit or boost it even further even if you have good skills um, and for specific ships this is really helpful to actually have and it just makes scanning easier and then you have the cargo scanner so in the sites you will actually find different cans that you can lock up to that you have to hack then to actually open um, and you can scan them before and see if they actually have anything of value if it's actually worth your time um, yeah doing those i rarely use that but yeah it's something that you can keep in mind 
because you can't find a can that completely empty or has like one carbon in it or something. Here are a few um, yeah example fists, and as you can see, they are really dirt cheap, under a million, uh, super easy to get into. As I said, yeah, for the Imacus, the Heron, and the Magnate here, mm -hmm. yeah, but they are pretty much all the same for for all the different versions. The uh, slot layout is a little bit different. The Heron is uh, usually considered like the best one because it has uh, the most mid slots. So you can fit, for instance, two scan range finding arrays. So that's the easiest to start with, really. Okay, what do you need skill-wise? Uh, obviously, you need specific skills for the different modules, um, and uh, the skills help you to do what you do better, as always in EVE. Uh, the main skill for the scanning is the astromatics uh, skill. Uh, it affects all the stats, so scan strength, scan deviation, and probe scan time. So this is really, really important to get uh, up to a pretty much level four. Um, and then you can focus on the others as well. Astromatic range finding, which just gives scan strength. Astromatic pinpointing, which just gives uh, better scan deviation. And uh, astromatic acquisition, which gives uh, yeah faster probe scan time. I'll talk about those uh, stats a little bit later as well. And then we have uh, the two uh, skills needed for the different sites. So archaeology is for the relic sites and um, hacking is for the data sites. And here you can see uh, the alpha set uh, of skills. And the nice thing really with exploration is you can start as an alpha, you can do it as an alpha really effectively, actually pretty darn effectively. Um, at least if you are not set on like going right into wormholes, um, what you can do uh, as an alpha nowadays, because there are specific uh, storms, uh, you can use those. I'll talk about those uh, a little bit later to do some NOSEC exploration and get more loot, because high sec and low sec, which you can do really easily as as an alpha. Are not that um, yeah profitable, obviously. Okay, and then we'll talk about the um, player skills that you actually need. Um, you need some basic skills, as with pretty much everything you do in Eve. You should know how to get from system to system, how to move around in systems. We will not talk about that here. Uh, you should know how to do bookmarks, how to work with bookmarks. That's extremely helpful, really. Um, the overview should be clear to you. Those are really the basics you need to just get started, obviously. We're not going over those, but we go over the scanning and the hacking. Yeah. So the last two points here. So scanning. Sorry, scanning down a site. Um, I will show uh, that a little bit later as well and just how it works. But uh, this is the basic layout. You have, the, uh, you have your system uh, map with all the different planets and such. Uh, and you have your probe scanner window. You have your uh, probes here. You have all the stats. So scan strength, deviation, and the scanning time as well are here. And then you have all these scan results and if you see something red cosmic signature uh, you see okay it has signal 0, 0.0 you need to actually scan it down then you launch your uh, probes so if your probes are launched uh, you will see a launch button here and then you can see your probes in space with these um, yeah, different circles and then you can arrange them in different forms uh, at the bottom and you can manipulate them uh, yeah, with uh, shortcuts of your obviously as well, but you can uh, drag them around and you can uh, yeah work with the probe size, um, and that is really important to actually get it uh, scanned down at the end. So you can start with a very high value and then gradually uh, um, get the value down until you actually uh, scan the site. 
So basically you just set the probes on whatever you see here, like the uh, red uh, circle here, uh, set them right in the middle, get them all together, grouped up, and then you start your first scan and then you go from there. But I'll demonstrate that later. And then we have the hacking uh, minigame. Uh, so once you actually at the site and uh, you have the cans there, you lock them up, go there and use your specific module. So either the data analyzer or the relic analyzer. Here it's the relic analyzer. And then you will see a yeah, somewhat similar view to this. So you have uh, yeah, nodes. Yeah. Uh, you will see uh, your starting point, uh, your starting position. Uh, all the other nodes will obviously be not like this. Uh, you will have uh, explorable nodes, so all the nodes right next to the one you just uh, you are at, basically, uh, you can explore. You have the explored nodes uh, and you have the unexplorable nodes. So you just click through and uh, your target, your goal is to get the system core, hack or kill the system core, destroy the system core, and then the can opens and you can loot it as normal. Yeah, you see all the different things you can find here. Um, obviously, if you do like a very basic uh, uh, hack, you will not find all of this, um, but yeah. That's just to show uh, all the different things you can find here. We go through them in a little bit. What do you see here is a green system core that's actually like the lowest uh, yeah, difficulty. Um, and then there are um, more different versions as well. At the bottom, you see your inventory. Basically, you can pick up items. So this inventory is full already with all the different items, um, but you can yeah, find items on the grid. Uh, for instance, the self repair here and pick them up and then use them. And on the bottom left, you actually have the stats of your virus, your attack. Yeah, you have the coherence and the strength, basically hit points and attack points or damage and here are the different uh, things you can actually see uh, on that board uh, on the grid so as i said uh, you have your stats you have the virus coherence which is basically hit points for your virus when those hit zero uh, yeah your virus dies and your hack failed and your virus strength that's the attack damage that you use to actually attack subsystems or the core. As you saw here before, the system core is green and here are different other versions, so yellow and red. Obviously yellow is uh, yeah, the mid-range and the red is the yeah, hardest one to get. Uh, as you will see, you have here uh, 50 over the green system core, you have a 70 over the yellow and the 90 over the uh, red one so that's their coherence that's the hit points of the core and down at the bottom you see the damage uh, on the board you will find uh, yeah if you click through it uh, for instance different subsystems yeah you can see uh, all of them here on the board as well those are defensive subsystems so those are actually something that can attack you uh, if you click on it they will also uh, yeah, attack you back it's basically like um, yeah uh, a, roll, uh, a round based fight you click on one you attack and then it attacks back so you again you see uh, their hit points at the top and the damage at the bottom and then they also have um, yeah specific things they do uh, the antivirus really is yeah very basic it's has not that much hit points but it has lots of damage and then you have the uh, firewalls those are uh, yeah basically just more hit points and less damage those are the basic ones you will encounter on any difficulty uh, and then 
uh, on the yellow difficulty the restoration nodes uh, can pop up as well and on the highest difficulty the virus suppressor can also pop up the restoration node is really the one that is pretty much the the worst one to get uh, if they pop up you really need to kill them directly because they restore or better they yeah, give uh, more health more hit points to the other nodes so each time you do anything one round passes and uh, the restoration nodes give uh, to a random other defensive subsystem that is already revealed uh, hit points to make them stronger harder to kill and the virus suppressor uh, is really yeah annoying because it actually lowers your damage your virus strength so you can pretty much not kill anything and those are active as i said uh, the goal is to really kill the uh, system core and then you have it unlocked uh, but yeah you will encounter all of these defensive subsystems on the way and maybe have to defeat them or go around them you can also find those data caches those can be nice uh, you can click on them and possibly get one of the utility subsystems which you can loot but they also might contain a defensive subsystem so mm, yeah, i would avoid advice generally advice against uh, actually clicking on them after you've reviewed them and then you have the utility subsystems you can actually loot and use to your advantage so kernel rod that um, yeah halves the uh, hit points or careers of any of the defensive subsystems or the system core you click on a secondary vector is really nice to kill a virus suppressor because it does 20 damage each round so you for instance find a virus suppressor you have a secondary vector you apply that to the virus suppressor and then you reveal three other nodes for instance or tag one other node on the way you do click uh, do three actions in the mini game and then a virus suppressor is dead through that yeah basically damage over time and then you have the polymorphic shield uh, this is really good to, uh, for the high damage uh, antivirus uh, because yeah the polymorphic shield absorbs damage you see a two here so it absorbs two times uh, so you can uh, get damage two times and not actually take damage three hit points and then we have self repair so that just adds some hit points each uh, round so each activity you do in the hacking mini game once you activated it it will add to your coherence so now for the uh, most important rule pretty much uh, that really helps you a lot in hacking um, depends on the grid but some grids are really easy to get through because of this rule if a node that is surrounded by six other nodes uh, that is always safe yeah. so this node here you can definitely click on and there will not be uh, yeah anything that can harm you unless there's actually the system core so if the system core is on any of these surrounding nodes and you click on this um, yeah you might actually find a defensive subsystem there then you definitely know okay the core is here i can find it very easily so you take out the system the defensive subsystem and then you just um, yeah find the core around here so it's really good to use these uh this rule of six to get very fast very uh, safe through the board find the core very easily and then kill it obviously it depends on the uh, actually a setup of the hacking minigame it's randomly generated so depending on how the grid looks there might be loads of these uh, and there might also be none or very few okay and uh, to round it off a few uh, tips and tricks basic ones obviously safety first as i said usually if you're an exploration ship you if you get caught in hostile space so if you do it outside of high sec you will be dead pretty much nothing will jump you that cannot kill you and pretty much anything kills you anyway so 
uh, yeah, you should be safe about it. Um, what's really crucial is uh, for your safety is the hacking because that's basically the point where you're the most uh, e yeah, easily attacked and usually uh, the hunters that actually hunt for explorers will specifically wait until they think that you are actually hacking a can. So you will go to a can, they will uh, yeah, watch you, they are cloaked, they will watch you and you will um, yeah, start hacking, then you are distracted, you, are, you need to look through the grid, you need to click on the grid and maybe you don't watch your G-scan or your overview as well and then they just decloak and kill you basically. Um, yeah, so that really is the point. That's what, what you really need, need to have in your, in, in your mind to be safe. When you're hacking, always just spam G-scan, watch your local, watch your overview uh, off the corner, uh, out of the corner of your eyes. Really important to just have that in your peripheral view at least and um, always have that in your mind that's the point where you're really the most uh yeah most easy killed yeah otherwise obviously the faster you do the hacking the faster you uh yeah move around in systems or from system to system the harder you are to catch um, renaming your ship is really a basic rule, always do that basically, but yeah, it's definitely uh, important for explorers. Um, and while you are cloaked, if you can cloak, <laughs> obviously if you're an alpha you cannot cloak, then you really need to make sure that you have bookmarks set up um, where you can be safe or walk around between bookmarks, and then you can do the scanning while that. Obviously always watch local, watch, watch the scan, watch your overview, um, especially as I said why you hack. You should make bookmarks, um, safe bookmarks, escape purchase. What I usually do is just warp to the center, um, drop my probes while, before that, uh, get scanning and then get bookmarks on the way and then warp between them, get the more safes up uh, while I do the scanning. And for null sec, low sec, um, especially null sec, um, Never warp gate to gate. Uh, it's really nice for us in the uni. We have the yeah uni wide folders, uh, the the campus folders, uh, so you can use those uh, and drop bookmarks as well in there. So if you actually don't want to do the site, you some other people can can use it. And as a as I said, you're really squishy, you're easy to kill, expect to lose your ship. There are hunters out there, there are people looking for explorers because yeah, you might have like that T1, not even a million worth uh, ship, but hey, maybe you've done a good run, you've done like an hour or two and you've got like a hundred mil or even more in your cargo. You're a good target and you're easy to kill, so yeah. Um, Losing your ship, really not a big deal. The EMA cough ops, yeah, once you do like regular exploration, it's really not a big deal. But the loot can sting if you have like multiple hundreds of millions because you did a really good haul. That can definitely sting. Okay, this uh, concludes the pretty much the theoretical part. Um, I'll see if we have any questions. Uh, the class feedback form uh, you can have a link later as well. 